I was really surprised with how little people were talking about the psychology. You don't look for the prettiest thumbnail, yeah. you click on one which... That's Jay Alto, the guy top YouTubers like Mr. Beast and Ryan Trahan hired to grow their channels. In this interview, Jay gives a masterclass on how he helped Ryan find viral video ideas, get millions of views on his Penny series, and improve his thumbnails. Colors are important, yeah. but I actually think people sleep on how important contrast is. How does that ideation process happen when a creator brings you on? What is the first things that you do. You're very good at what you do. Hey guys, before we get into it, this is actually a special two-part interview with Jay because after we filmed our sit-down interview, Jay worked with Ryan Trahan on his recent Penny series that took YouTube by storm. So I had to ask him about how they prepared for it, how did they come up with the ideas, the thumbnails, and so much more. So I want to give Jay a call <laughs> and then we'll go to our in-person interview that we filmed before. Jay, what's up, man? Good to see you. I'm loving the longer hair. It's good to see you too. Yeah, it certainly has. No longer the uh, the Logan Paul lookalike, but uh, my, own, my own being now, my own being. Okay, I want to dive right into it by asking about what do your weekly meetings look like with Ryan? How are you selecting and researching the ideas? Who's in that meeting? Take us behind the scenes. There's three of us plus Ryan working in this ideas team. And we're coming up with, you know, five, ten ideas every week. And only, you know, do the math on that. Like if we're coming with those every week, we submit 20 ideas a week between us all. You know, he only posts once every two, three weeks. So it's this, the number of, of like things that we have to come up with to, to make it. Like we, we really mock up thumbnails to a pretty high level before it gets the green light. Wow. I, I'm curious, has Ryan ever filmed a video that he didn't have a thumbnail done beforehand? No. I think he, I think, you know, that was something that came from Jimmy as well. Like I know Jimmy doesn't, doesn't really move forward until he has a finished product. So for the last Penny series, he... Uh, had this very clever idea where he came up with the thumbnails beforehand and that actually helped guide him throughout the series. So it helped give him ideas when he was just stuck in the middle of, of nowhere and needed to fly, think of a way to make money. He used the thumbnails as inspiration. So he, he had a similar thing with this with this series as well. So Jay, I'm curious, how do you even find great original ideas on YouTube today? Like even looking at Mr. Beast's recent videos, I know you worked with him, uh, the train versus giant pit one that he did. There's actually an older version of that video and thumbnail that performed really well on a different channel. And Jimmy obviously adapted and elevated it. And, and Ryan did something similar. I saw years ago, there was a video about a Tokyo sleep pod and then Ryan put his own spin and personality on it. So, so I'm curious, what's the research process of finding those? ideas that have potential but then you could still make your own yeah definitely I, it's, it, that's a, a really important part of it I, th I think for for me i like to call them triggers so for example i have a playlist on youtube that whenever i see an idea even if it's not something that i'm going to watch but i think it's there's something there either for you know ryan or myself that i like i'll put it into that playlist and then i'll just build that that playlist over time so it just becomes this bank of really good ideas i can look into and try and find inspiration from you know it's fascinating I, I do the same thing i mean if i click on a thumbnail from a creator i've never heard of i immediately screenshot it and put it into a folder because i think there's something fascinating and something psychological that's going on there that i want to remember and revisit to see if i can draw inspiration when i'm thinking about my next video idea i think that the thing that i often find is is interestingly it's often creators that i don't sub subscribe to or follow yeah. like it will be that odd you know, like viral banger that you just see, which is like from some channel that you've not heard of before. And probably you click on the channel and every other video got like 50K. And then all of a sudden this one's got like 7 million or something ridiculous. Like they're the, they're the ideas that are really interesting. When you can find a, a smaller channel mm. that's maybe not in the meta or, you know, stereotypically like a big YouTuber, when they have videos that explode, there's clearly something that works there. So there's something to tap into. Yeah, I like the call that the outlier rule. I mean, I look at channels and I'm like, okay, could that video that I just watched be a one out of 10 on their YouTube studio dashboard? Like that original sleep pod video, I think got over 50 million views, but it came from a channel that only had 1 million subscribers, which is, which is a crazy outlier for them. And obviously you still need to adapt it and make it your own like Ryan does, but at least it validates that there's something there that we could tap into. Yeah, without a doubt. It's a, it's, it's a very powerful strategy that one. Okay, Jay, so last time we spoke, you gave a masterclass on thumbnails. I even asked you to roast a bunch of thumbnails so we could put that into practice. So I want to play that part for everybody watching, and then I have a few more questions for you. So I want to talk about um, what are the four principles of a great thumbnail? I think the first one is the idea itself. And mm -hmm. when I say the idea, I actually mean the video idea, not the thumbnail idea, mm -hmm. the video idea. Mm -hmm. Because 
the, the thumbnail is just an advert for the video mm. and doesn't matter how good your thumbnail is, if your video sucks, <laughs> yeah. it's not gonna work. It's like, not gonna save it. And then once you get into the specific thumbnails, mm. you've got the uh, getting the viewer's attention, mm -hmm. appealing to the viewer's interests, and then actually hooking the viewer, which mm. is giving them a reason to click. Take me video. through attention, interest, mm -hmm. hook. What are those, how do you make it better? The first one, attention. Just imagine the last time you were on YouTube, scrolling through the homepage or scrolling through search, not every thumbnail gets your attention. There's mm. plenty of thumbnails that you literally just ignore, that mm. just roll on, they didn't even get your mental awareness. The interest side of things is all about showing what your video idea is yeah. about. Again, sounds obvious, but if someone is looking at for your thumbnail for a split second, this tiny thumbnail on the YouTube homepage, they need to know what your video is about to actually get them to click. Mm. So you need to make sure you can capture clearly what your video is about, whether it's something that interests them in a split second. Mm. So very, very, I would probably say one of the hardest part of the specific thumbnail yeah. is you've got to try and get across a lot of information in this tiny little still. And, and then the hook, I say this a lot as well, obviously I'm very focused on thumbnails, but it's the combined package. Yeah. We can't neglect titles, specifically for the hook. It, it's how the title and the thumbnail work together to yeah. get the viewer to click. So it's, it's all about actually just piquing someone's curiosity enough, giving them enough of a reason to be like, yep, I want to spend the next 10, 20 minutes watching this video. Yeah. I wanted to put this into practice and show you a few thumbnails. Let's do it. And get your thoughts on why they may be good, bad, need improvement. Mm -hmm. Here we go. First one, maybe talk about, read it out loud, talk about what you're seeing. Yeah. So this is Mark Rober's uh, Devil's Toothpaste one. And you know, this is a great test for just sort of looking at a thumbnail and reviewing if it's good is looking at it for the first time and just seeing where your eyes go. So my eyes are instantly drawn to that massive explosion of color on the right hand side of the thumbnail. I've never seen anything like that before, uh, before seeing this thumbnail, like that's unique. You just, it, it's colorful, it grabs your attention. You sort of know what's going on straight away. You're like, well, something's exploding in some sort. So you kind of like know what, what's actually going on. And then the title comes in nicely and just gives a bit more context. Uh, emphasizes it by saying world's largest so it's world's largest devil's toothpaste explosion so you just you've got that and it's it's done all the things yeah it's got your attention it's shown you what the video is about and it's what well, it's hooked me because i want to know yeah how would you improve it real quick we'll get right back to the video but first i want to thank the sponsor of this video canva you likely already know canva for their user-friendly design tools but with their new visual suite canva is really changing the game so say goodbye to juggling six different subscriptions and jumping from app to app just to upload your work because with canva's visual suite you can actually plan create schedule and publish your designs all in one place you can also brainstorm using their whiteboard and even transform a thought into an image on their whiteboard with their text image AI. So see something you like, a few clicks later, and boom, it's a social post. But let's say that post may be missing your key branded elements to match the rest of your content. No worries. Just check out Canva's brand kit where you can keep all of your logos, colors, fonts, and more for easy use. And then when you're ready to post, use Canva's content planner to schedule uploads across all platforms. And if you need a caption, their docs tool is equipped with Magic Write AI, which is a perfect way to jumpstart your creativity. So basically, from concepts to execution, Canva has you covered. So click the link below for an extended 45 day trial of Canva's visual suite. And now back to the video. Well, some people might say they could improve it. Is it the arrow and Mark? Mark's wearing white shorts, white t-shirt, white cap, the arrows in white. And some people would mm. probably say maybe some color might actually draw some emphasis on Mark. Mm. I'd probably say that actually that's, that's not what would be the most optimized move here because the the reason people are going to click is for the explosion. Mm, mm. Mark's still there. You can still make him out. He's contrasting nicely with the, the, the shed door. But actually by adding, if he's wearing like a red t-shirt or the arrow's red, now he's taking a lot of the eyes. Mm. And, you know, no disrespect, Mark. Sorry if you're watching, <laughs> but like he's not the reason people are clicking. There's some diehard fans that will watch everyone's mm. video, but it's not specifically the fact that he's in the thumbnail that yeah. they're going to be clicking for. So that's really telling because Mark has over 20 million subscribers. Mm -hmm. He's been mm -hmm. uploading on YouTube for 10 years, yeah. and you're saying that like even he's not the draw. It's the tension. Mm. It's the explosion and what's going on that's emphasized. Yeah, I mean, even when you're operating at that high level in terms of viewership, like Mark is. The views are big, but for him to get a viral video, like top performing for his channel, he's got to appeal that loyal audience, but he's also got to appeal to loads of new views. Yeah. He's got to transcend that audience. Yeah. So it's where a lot of creators get wrong. Mm. They start getting a bit of momentum. They think, not in an ego way, yeah, but yeah. they're like, people are clicking for me, yeah, people are yeah. clicking for me. There's some, as I said, Mark has a load of diehard fans, but 
if you really want to get a viral video, you've got to appeal to people yeah. who know, don't even know who you are. Cool. Next one. Yeah. Good old, talk good talk old about Jimmy. what you see. Yeah, so it's uh, it's Mr. Beast in a in a coffin buried alive. <laughs> Sound, only in YouTube would we say. <laughs> uh, and then day two text, and it's the I spent 50 hours buried alive. So uh, I, it's one of his best performing videos. If you're anywhere involved in the scene, you probably would have seen this video. But yeah, it's, it's a great thumbnail. And I've seen... When you first look at this thumbnail, it seems like a bit of a weird way to capture someone being buried alive. Mm. Like if you, if I asked a bunch of people to sketch being buried alive, they probably wouldn't have done it this way. They would have done like a, a cross section of the environment where it's the, you see the coffin, loads of soil, and then the ground above, or they'd actually do like a much deeper hole with like someone at the bottom of, of the pit. It's not the most typical way of doing it, but it's the most effective way of doing it. Because as we discussed earlier, you've got to get across the idea in the most effective way possible. and as soon as you start adding like layers to it or you actually you know are, are asking the viewer to infer something you're asking too much yeah you literally just got to show it in their face this is what it is so the coffin isn't that deep but it's clearly a coffin jimmy's in there he's not looking in a great way he's got some bags under his eyes he's looking pretty scared uh he's in a black tuxedo which is <laughs> i think it's just a like a bit of a remarkable thing i don't, I don't know if that actually does much i think probably if anything it's just creating some separation with the coffin mm. uh, which makes him stand out slightly but it, it's it seems like quite a big big element which isn't doing anything to me and then he's got day two as well which just uh shows that you know it's not just a guy getting in a coffin it's yeah, a guy it's spent staying. two days in a coffin yeah so yeah you get everything there it's going to grab your attention this guy with a, a, a pretty big facial expression you know exactly what the videos are about and then the hooks there because you know who doesn't want to see someone buried alive yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's interesting you mentioned colors because like i look at the color wheel obsessively yeah. uh, obsessively and try to figure out like contrasting colors um last one is this one which is one of our thumbnails mm. i'm curious if you could roast it mm. our interview with logan paul yeah 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 so and i'm curious your thought on interview thumbnails in general yeah 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 no from a wider perspective to make this try and re try and make this relevant for everyone is like you've got to identify what is interesting and appealing to the viewer. So in, in this interview, you're interviewing Logan, who's yeah. not only looks like me, but is also <laughs> one of the biggest uh, YouTubers or you know, w was one of the biggest YouTubers on the platform and is basically a celebrity now. Yeah. So to me, no disrespect to you, John, yeah, like, yeah. that's what people are going to be clicking yeah, for. Yeah, they want to see sure. Logan speak. Yeah, for sure. So you've got a thumbnail here with, with pretty much, you know, Logan being a big part of it on the right hand mm -hmm. side. That mic doesn't look like it was there. It looks like you've added that, yeah, uh, true. which, is, yeah, which yeah. is good because people are probably asking why, why would you, you know, add a mic? It's all down to that context of yeah. being to the interest. If, exactly. if people saw a headshot of Logan and some text, they're not quite sure is it like a documentary or someone yes, breaking yeah. down logan's act, you know yeah. life or explaining a certain situation that he was he was in you add that mic and all of a sudden it's like okay this is an interview and it looks like logan was actually the person being interviewed like right. logan's there right. that's a massive thing right so people always say like I, why would you add the mic but it, it's it's yeah. there for a good reason and then you've got some text i was going to die good text selection um you know, it's pretty extreme. I was going to die. He's <laughs> curious. Like, I, this is a good thumbnail. You know, if I was looking to improve it, I'd say that, you know, I would argue that maybe the text is actually taking too much away. Mm. It's not necessarily a bad thing, because I said it's pretty extreme, but you've got the text, you've got the highlight, then it's underlined as well. It's taking a lot of the eyes. And maybe you want the, eye, the eyes to actually go to Logan first, because that's what's going to, you know, trigger the recognition, be like, I want to watch this. It's subtle, but I think that that would probably work. And as well, it's interesting how you uh, masked out, you, you cropped out Logan's head and put him against a white, uh, a white background. I think that two things there. Potentially, you could have added another color, which would have made Logan pop even more mm, because mm. you said colors are important. Yeah. But I actually think people sleep on how important contrast is. Hmm. Like it's contrast, which is really the biggest driver of color. Because if, hmm. we have, if we have a red arrow, which is classic in the YouTube thumbnail game, and put that against like an orange background, mm. it's not going to pop. It's mm -hmm. not, it's not, so the red can stay the same if you put the red on the white background, it's, hmm. it's going to pop, but it's actually the contrast which is driving the effectiveness of it. Mm. So maybe a different color background would have, would have drawn even more emphasis to Logan or even actually keeping in the environment hmm. because that shows this thumbnail would have been like a couple of years ago, this was what every thumbnail looked yeah, like. Yeah, it yeah. was like masked out character, block color background, right. text on top. And I think it almost got a bit abused. Mm. Like people started just seeing that as like the clickbait thumbnail mm. because when you have quite an edited thumbnail, you can hide 
the content behind like anything yeah. because you can make it. So when you actually keep in the environment and use a single image, still put text on top of it, it just feels a bit more trustworthy. You yeah. actually see Logan in an environment. It's not like you just went and got this shot of Logan off Google Images. It just feels like he was actually there, Real. which helps build more trust. And yeah, it's so interesting that you, I think the way we met is you DM'd me when I originally had a thumbnail of Logan mm -hmm. that did not have a mic. And it was like mm -hmm. kind of like one side was green, one side was red. Mm -hmm. And it was like Vine versus YouTube showing the evolution. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. And I spent, I think probably 15 hours making that thumbnail. Yeah, yeah. Um, and actually didn't perform too well. Mm -hmm. I swapped it with this and then it performed better. Mm. But even these notes, I think we'll go back um, with our team and just review it. So just hearing your take on the good, the bad, it's mm. fascinating to put yeah. into practice. Okay, so Jay, I wanna transition to talking about the actual video now, specifically how can we speak and script so our videos have better retention without being gimmicky. And you put out this amazing tweet, I loved it. You analyzed the readability level of top YouTubers. Can you tell me more about that? Is this official test that you can use where you put in the, the script or the words and it, and it basically tells you the readability of, of the, the piece of writing. Mm. And I was interested to do that for a few, few YouTubers. So I just went in and, and copied the, the, the transcripts of, of some of their, I think it was the most recent videos. I can't remember if it was their most recent or most popular, probably a combination of both and just put it through made some predictions beforehand and it was interesting that someone like Mr. Beast, who is obviously trying to appeal to everyone, like you don't get 150 million views consistently by being niche. You have to appeal to everyone, like a six-year-old and a 60-year-old. And uh, if you need to do that, you need to appeal to the lowest common denominator, which is that six-year-old. And interestingly, like Mr. Beast readability score, which is graded as like a school year, uh, school grade, was the lowest of, of mainly the big YouTubers. Yeah, the name that sticks out on that list is MKBHD because he does so many detailed tech review videos, yet even his readability level is low. And I think that just goes to show that simplifying your speech doesn't mean uh, dumbing it down. And, and one tool that I like to use to help with that, and it's totally free, is called HemingwayApp.com because it lets you drop in your script for your YouTube video, helps you edit, and then gives you the grade level um, so you could change it right then and there so you put it into practice. Because I don't know about you, but honestly, I think that um, bad writers hide behind big words and bad creators by by an extension of that. A hundred percent, yeah. I, I think you, you can often see that when people are trying to make up for something by, you know, speaking like they would never speak to anyone. Like sometimes I watch videos, I'm like, there's no way, maybe they are, they're just being truly authentic themselves. But in a lot of cases, I just think, there's no way you would actually speak to a human like that. What's really cool is seeing you, Jay, go from a YouTube guru on Twitter to a consultant to now starting your own YouTube channel, which I really applaud. So I'm curious, what are the things that you're learning now that you think too many YouTubers do that may give you a short-term benefit, but cause long-term harm for your channel? Like, like for example, I think fast-paced editing that may help increase your retention now, but hurt your brand long-term seems to be one of them. But, but what do you think? That's fundamentally it, is chasing short-term views over long-term views. And, and that might be by repeating an idea that you know has done well before. And, you know, same with clickbait. Like, even clickbait in the sense that isn't clickbait, but you're just leaning a bit too far into the exaggerated realms of thumbnails. Like, yeah, you will get that click in that moment, but what does that do to the viewer's trust over the long run? And even if it's not instant, you can only do that so many times before the viewer goes... I know what, you know, I know what they're up to at this point. They, I, I know they're never going to quite deliver on what they promised. And eventually they're just going to stop, stop. Yeah. My ego is taking a hit when I started that YouTube channel. Like I went, I went from someone like a YouTube guru who'd been studying like thumbnails for, for two years and, and sort of, sort of slowly got into wider YouTube and then started posting videos that were only getting like a thousand, a few thousand views. Like, of course my ego took a hit. Like that was, that was humbling, but I knew. I was playing the long game or I am playing the long game. I'm trying to build something bigger that will, will take time. Well, dude, I think you're an awesome writer, a clear thinker, and I have no doubt that will translate to your videos in time as you continue consulting some of the biggest names on YouTube. I appreciate you taking the time, Jay. No, I appreciate it. As I said, I'm going to do it till I crack it. So uh, <laughs> enjoy the ride.